Dude, Israel-Palestine debates are always like, here we have a celebrated author, journalist, scholar, activist who has spent their entire lives covering the subject versus guy who has a lot of opinions and is going to be very loud and smarmy and annoying about them. I know the norm debate is up, but I don't know if I want to watch this. Even Pierce Morgan quote retweeted. Even Pierce Morgan quote retweeted Shmuley and was like, you used a lot of ad hominems. I don't know if I, I feel like this is going to give me brain disease. Like, I feel like it's going to hurt my soul. I just... Israel says Hamas has just weeks to release all remaining hostages before it launches a deadly assault on the Gazan city of Rafah. Prime Minister Netanyahu has rejected the latest round of negotiations as delusional. With the Palestinian death toll now exceeding 29,000, pressure on Israel. Shmuley said 400 women were shot in the genitals and had their breasts chopped off on October 7th. Dude, I think like, I think that's not the worst thing because I feel like a broader audience is going to look at that and go like, okay, these guys are getting unhinged. Like the more ultra Zionists get free reign to propagandize their psychotic murder fantasies, the more I feel like normies look at that and go, what are you saying? He also said they were playing with the titties like soccer balls. I can't tell if you're joking or if he actually said that. Oh my God, did he actually say that? Okay, now I do want to watch that. Is mounting. Brazil's President Lula said it's not a war in Gaza, but a genocide. Is he right? Is it time for Israel to end this war? We've invited two of our most passionate contributors to debate this. I'm the American Jewish political scientist, Norman Finkelstein. And I like that it's like Norm, who's written many books on the matter and is like a formative scholar on the subject versus a charlatan, a clown. It's always like, dude, Israel-Palestine debates are always like, here we have a celebrated author, journalist, scholar, activist who has spent their entire lives covering the subject of Israel's uh, genocidal actions versus guy with a dildo shop uh, and, and, and a podcast on YouTube. It's like, what is happening? How does no one look at the situation and go, wait a minute, what? Did you just say you're putting a scholar up against like a dude who has a, a, a dildo shop and a podcast? What? Excuse me. I feel like maybe you, like, are you trying to set up the issue to like make Israel look even more f unhinged? I didn't know Finkelstein had a dildo shop. <laughs> Good one. No, I'm of course talking about Shmuley. <laughs> Celebrated scholar versus crying baby. Yeah, also, of course, like, <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, here is the person saying Israel's doing a genocide. They are literally like, half the time they're like Jewish Israeli, okay? And have dedicated their entire lives to covering genocide. Like, they're like, the foremost respected genocide historian scholar versus guy who has a lot of opinions and is going to be very loud and smarmy and annoying about them. What? What, what, what do you, how is this like, how does this not like ring alarm bells in people's minds? Okay. <laughs> Celebrated scholar versus paranoid schizophrenic. Are you insinuating dildo shop owners don't have any relevant knowledge? In this circumstance, they do not, okay? Yes, a dildo shop owner could be very knowledgeable on an issue, but at best, it's a hobby when you're talking to an actual scholar on the matter. I have been covering this issue extensively for many, many years. I have read a shit ton, okay? I would never consider myself a subject matter expert in comparison to someone like Norm Finkelstein. Do you understand? That's it. That's my point. And the author, Rabbi Shmuley. October 7th. Let me ask you this. 1,200 Jews yeah. were burned to death, slaughtered, yeah. and no democracy should allow that, except for one person, Norm Finkelstein. He's suffering from Judeo dementia. It's not Shmuley who suffers dementia. Rabbi Shmuley seems incapable of processing very basic facts. Do you think that, in principle, Hamas should stay in power. Answer the question. No, Allow no, no. me to finish. Your, your debating style Allow. is to drone on coma inducing. That's how you debate. You try to put your. Oh, you hit him with the expert level anti debate cannon fodder. You're boring. You're boring.
Please stop saying things. You're boring. You're boring all the bitches. Classic Andrew Tate style. You're boring. Please stop bullying me. Opponents into slumber, for God's sake. How about letting me decide whether it's a simple question? I don't no, think you have to no, be a professor I, to answer the question. Here. Should Hamas stay in power? He, he should have done he should have done the worm rabbi Shmuley hits the expert level debate tactic of getting up and doing the worm it would have been over at that point okay the xqc's greatest invention xqc's greatest invention for the field of debate is the forbidden jutsu of doing the worm okay welcome uh, to both of you uh, let me start, if I may, with you, uh, Norman Finkelstein. Good to have you back on Uncensored. Bro, this fit is abysmal, by the way. It is so bad, it's f***ing up the white balance, dude. Look at this. Blown out. Thank you for having me. It, 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 we seem to be reaching a point here where something has to give. Either Israel stops obliterating Gaza and killing so many innocent people in the process, uh, or... I'm not sure what the alternative is. Um, how, do you, how do you read where we are with this war? There are many ways to read it. You can read it politically, you can read it militarily, you can read it strategically, or you can read it from a point of view of human rights and international law, so long as it bears on human rights. Now, when it comes to the very last consideration, I think it's very clear how we should read it namely the International Court of Justice, the supreme judicial body in the world, has said that Israel is under two obligations. Obligation number one is to honor the laws of war in what it's doing in Gaza. And obligation number two, Israel has to provide humanitarian aid and assistance to the people of Gaza. Those are its two obligations under international law. The court also ruled that Israel is plausibly committing genocide, and there is no evidence whatsoever, zero evidence, that since the court ruling, Israel has changed its tactics or its strategy in Gaza. So as of, we, as of now, as we speak, Israel is still, by the conclusion of uh, fif uh, 15 judges in the International Court of Justice, 15 of the 17 justice, judges, Israel is committing genocide or plausibly committing genocide, and it's not honoring its obligations as they were spelled out by the International Court of Justice. OK. Rabbi Shmuley, you tweeted this morning uh, when we booked you for this debate. Uh, you called Norman Finkelstein an anti-Semite. You said, you have my word that, God willing, I will digitally decapitate, digitally disembowel and digitally destroy him. Uh, do you Normal think guy. Right kind of Dude, that's a really cool way to start this. Just a really cool way to start this to show how normal you are to the televised audience. Trick before you try and well, debate such well, a know, serious matter. First of all, thank you for having me back, Pierce. It's nice to see you. And Norm, I hope you don't mind if I call you Norm. You can please call me Shmuley. Norman Finkelstein is on the show for only one reason. If the journalistic idiom that Jews are news is true because you know, Israel's this big, it gets this much attention, then how much more so? Jewish anti-Semites get the brightest headlights. Norman Finkelstein is the foremost Jewish anti-Semite on planet Earth. He actually attacked his own parents, whose only crime was to be Jewish. Their entire family was annihilated in Warsaw. What? They're not victims. They hated Germans. Dude, uh, dude, he's awesome. Right off the bat, being like, Norm Finkelstein is a self-hating Jew. He's a Jewish anti-Semite. And then following that up by disrespecting his commentary surrounding, like, carrying on the message of his... Holocaust survivor parents. Incredible. Never has a man been so Israel without actually living in Israel. Because if I'm not mistaken, Shmuley is like, he, he lives in like New Jersey or some shit, right? Like he's not, he is so like, not pleased. He's from Florida. He's giving Israel, okay? He is so Israel here. I mean, he's, he's draped up like the flag here anyway, okay? And it's fucking hilarious. Um, 
34 MKD 50. Thank you for the 50 gift to subs. Wanted him dead. He didn't think to himself, maybe my parents wanted the Germans to suffer to stop the war, to break the will of the German people to stop murdering, gassing 10,000 Jews per day. His hatred of the Jewish people has extended even to his own family. He calls, Jew he calls Israel a satanic state that comes from the boils of hell. He calls it a vandal state. He said that the 15 people murdered in the Charlie Hebdo massacres, he has no sympathy for them whatsoever. But this is the most telling thing of all, and you discussed this the last time. He said, on October 7th, hours after the massacre of 1,200 Jews started, he wrote, it warms every fiber of my soul to see the children of Gaza smiling as their arrogant, Jew arrogant Jewish uh, supremacists that have been humbled. The stars above in heaven are looking down. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Let's just go through this. 400 women shot in the genitals, their breasts cut off as terrorists played with their bloody breasts like a football. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Bro, bro, what? He actually said that? <laughs> Yo, he's like, there's no difference between interviewing the crazy guy at the subway station, man, at that point. I'm sorry. You're, you're, you're on crack, dude. Like, what? That is so unhit, Dude, 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 dude. You, you, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this other than, like, there's literally one account of that actually happening, and it's uncorroborated as the person standing right next to that person didn't see it. Yeah, and the guy who said it happened, I, or the lady who said it happened was like, was, you know, they, they asked follow-up questions and she didn't really have too much. And I think saying 400, 400 women had their breasts cut off. I mean, you just don't give a about anything at that point. Yeah, that's 800 titties that were cut off. Like, I, I, I feel like mathematically... I don't think there's enough time in the day even to be able to conduct such operations. That's so many. Okay. I, I, it's just, yeah, one, one third of the Israeli casualties were women whose breasts were cut off. And then they just sat around and played football with the breasts. Women shot in their genitals, Norm. Glory! You should be a televangelist. Glory! Hallelujah! Children burned to death and beheaded. Glory! Hallelujah! Come on, come on. You're a fear person, Pierce. This is exactly what your friend Douglas Murray said, because he refuses to debate Norman Finkelstein. He called him a sociopath. He said Norman Finkelstein is a psychotic. He's not on your show because he's a serious academic. Dude, that's so, that's awesome. It's like he's telling on himself. He's literally telling, he's calling himself out right now. He's like, no serious academic goes on your show. After all, only psychotic people go on your show. After all, I'm on your show. Yeah, by the way, Douglas Murray is a straight-up white supremacist, but... Wolfgang Benz, professor of, of Ellingen, who was one of the foremost German historians of the Holocaust, said the only thing interesting about Norman Finkelstein is that he needs a psychiatrist. Okay, well, look, professor right. Wolfgang... Wait, 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 no, wait, 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 Professor Wolfgang... I want okay. to just ask you this, though. You've spent... You see, it's interesting. Norman Finkelstein gave a, I thought, a pretty measured uh, argument in response to my first question. You've gone ad hominem immediately and attacked the man. Yes, sir. That is... That, sir, is an ad hominem. How dare you, sir? Don't you do it. It's like, wow, man, you've sure told him. Not the issue and not the question that I asked you, which is to respond to what he was saying, which is a growing feeling around the world, by the way, that Israel is now committing, as he put it, uh, as a court said, a plausible genocide. I don't happen to think it is genocide they're doing. But what I do think is happening is that there is a, a, a shameful number of innocent women and children being slaughtered on a daily basis, and I don't see what the end game is other than the obliteration of most of Gaza and many people living there. So to answer that so, point... So, let me, so, let, me, so let, me, let me answer your question directly. First of all, when you quote President Lula of Brazil, he is a criminal who served in jail for corruption. He has zero credibility. He also knows nothing about history. Wait, wait I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I don't know if you're up to date on this stuff, but... You know, Lula Livre, okay, number one, totally exonerated, absolutely political, the political machine landed him jail, landed him in jail over faulty bullshit charges. The f*** do you mean? Even if he did go to jail for corruption, by the way, for like real charges, that still doesn't change the reality that like, uh, you know, Israel is doing a, a, a genocide. This guy has one speed, dog, one speed and one speed only. And that's just anyone you bring up, I'm going to shit on them. I'm going to do a character assassination. I'm going to try my very best to just like 
spit out as many psychotic facts that are not even factually accurate at all. 10,000 Jews were gassed a day for four years after the Vonzi conference in January 1942. To compare that to Gaza is an abomination. Secondly, Norman Finkelstein is a liar. The International Court of Justice specifically said that Israel is not committing a genocide. So when you tell me why do I... No, they didn't. No, they didn't. What do you mean? Dude, dude, it's like, it's like looking at an ongoing court case and being like, well, they haven't finished the deliberations yet. No, if anything, they did say there's enough credible evidence that they certainly are doing a genocide which is precisely the reason why there is enough evidence here that we will continue the invest we will continue the deliberations what the f it's the exact opposite of what he's saying the truth is the exact opposite of what he's saying go after ad hominem i'm a, i'm questioning his academic credentials he just lied on international tv he didn't say a single thing about his academic credentials by the way South Africa sued to get the ICJ to declare that Israel's committing a genocide, and they said they're not committing a genocide, and they said they would not stop the Israeli offensive. That is a straight out lie. Okay, well, that'd be, all right. If you're gonna call Everyone, my Zionist Jewish community has Shmuley's take on the court findings is actually so delusional. Dude, that's so funny. It's like, yeah, listen, guys, listen. Yes, the judge said that I would be released on bond until my court date, but that basically means that I'm, I'm vindicated. I'm, I'm, perfectly innocent of the charges that's what that means right as the as the deliberations continue my man took innocent until proven guilty to be the most maximum position he took the innocent until proven guilty to the maximalist position that you can which means you're innocent because you know guess what i haven't been proven guilty yet the presumption of innocence means that i'm i'm technically innocent completely not utterly wait wait, wait, oh, no, wait hang on. No, if you're going to call him a liar Amongst other things you've called it, I'm going to go back to Norman Finkelstein and get him to respond to that. Would you like me to respond now? Yes, please. Yeah, I think it's only reasonable you should. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure what was the purpose to inviting either me or Mr. Shmuley to this program, because obviously uh, we are in two entirely different wavelengths. Mr. Shmuley is in the business, which is not surprising, of character assassination. Yeah. Also. Also, Rabbi Shmuley's, I don't even, I shouldn't even say Rabbi Shmuley. I don't even think he is a, he is full-blown rabbi, right? Um, that's like marketing. Yeah, Shmuley's uh, academic credential assessment is comprised of him just being like, I hate you, you suck, and uh, you disrespected your Holocaust survivor parents that you, uh, that you talk about. What credential was addressed here? Shin. He's in, the car, he's in the business of libel. That's his job, because where he have to confront the facts, he would be in a very difficult situation. So let me make one clarification. None of my remarks bear on my personal opinions. I simply am repeating- He's a rabbi, by the way, ordained in 88. No, but isn't him, um, what do you call it? He's, he doesn't like operate in a synagogue at all, right? Like I'm pretty sure. In what the documentary record shows. Now, according to Mr. Shmuley, I am a liar because according to Mr. Shmuley, the International Court of Justice explicitly concluded that Israel was not committing a genocide. Now, I would say that Mr. Shmuley is suffering from what I would call a Judeo dementia because there is no possibility on earth that any rational human being could have read the opinion or the ruling rendered by the International Court of Justice uh, after the South Africa application and after the oral proceedings. There is no possibility on earth that any rational person can conclude that the International Court of Justice ruled that Israel was not committing a genocide. So. We now have two difficulties. Number one, Mr. Shmuley seems to think his purpose to being on the program is to personally attack me, the Latin term ad hominem attacks. Number two, Rabbi Shmuley seems incapable of processing very basic facts. If, that, if Mr. Shmuley believes that the International Court of Justice ruled explicitly that Israel was not committing genocide, if that's what he truly believes, then I would say he's suffering from some form of Judeo-dementia. Okay, let okay, me bring I, in... May I respond? Yes, may I respond? you may, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pierce. You know, it's interesting, Pierce, that you and Norm are saying that I went ad hominem. No, I did not. I quoted his own words of <laughs> Jewish and- <laughs> I did not go ad hominem when I said, you're a, you're a, uh, <laughs> an anti-Semitic Jew. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, no, I was simply, I was simply, I was simply questioning his credibility as an author and a, <laughs> and an academic when I said that. Antisemitism, vitriol, which are so extreme that they're shocking. I told you, he called his own parents haters of Germans. Not the Germans hated his parents and, and annihilated his family. His, his parents hated the Germans. But now let's, he just now says, I suffer from Jewish dementia. Notice, it's not Shmuley who suffers dementia. It's always Jewish dementia. It's always Jews. Norman Finkelstein has now accused Israel of five different genocides. 1982, he accused Israel of genocide in Lebanon. It went on uh, 2006, 2009, 2015. Now, this is the fifth. That means we Jews, I always thought Jews suck at sports and PR. We suck at genocide because we've attempted it five times. And yet in all the Arab-Israeli wars, Jews and Arabs together, the numbers that have died, including terrorists, are less than 100,000. Bashar al-Assad next door killed 600,000 in two years. We Jews. Bro, why would you admit that? That's a, that is a horrible point to make. Bro, he literally said, dog, we're, we've only killed 100,000, man. It's like, come on. That's insane. That is such a bad thing to say. Dude, this is a this is a textbook representation of what happens when you smell your own farts for far too long and you're surrounded by people who are like-minded and don't try to do a little bit of uh, massaging of your narrative. That is a wild thing to openly admit if your goal and your point, Kaya, come here. Kaya, come here. If your goal is to say that Israel is not actually systematically trying to eradicate Palestinians. Jews ought to go to him and ask him, how do we finally do this? Because according to Norm, we've tried it for 30 years and we can't do it. In fact, since 1967, when Gaza came under Israeli control, the population of Gaza grew by 1 million people. How is that a genocide? Now, when Norm says that the ICJ said that Israel is committing a genocide, I repeat, Norm, respectfully, you are a fabricator. They said specifically that Israel has an obligation not to, South Africa asked for a cessation of hostilities. They refused. They repeated that refusal last week. How you could get on this program and actually fabricate? Well, I guess I know why, because even your mentors, Chicago professor Peter Novick calls your scholarship, quote, trash. And this is trash because anyone can Google what we're saying. Yeah, but but much really, look, I'm going to jump in again, because again, what you're doing is attacking your other uh, debater here. He but said you're not, I suffer what, from what, dementia, what, what, what for God's not, sake. Why not, don't you call him out no, on that? You're dementia? Not, Seriously? With dementia? Respect, with respect, what you're not doing is ask, answering the specific questions. There are many, okay, so many... Answer, okay, you so let, know so there are many, many people around the world increasingly concerned about the scale of Israel's response, the appalling death toll of children, uh, the appalling number of children also being orphaned, the appalling number of women being killed, innocent women, and they don't see an end game. They just see Israel okay. continuing to bomb, 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 kill, kill, kill. But how does this end? If the next stage is Rafa, which now has six times as many people in it as it did four months ago, and is a huge refugee camp, and you're trying to find just a few thousand Hamas amongst over a million and a half people, then you're going to get even more people around the world saying well, this, a is a, this, I, is a, this is a senseless way of conducting war. Now, what do you so say I hear to you. That? I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. OK. In the lifetime of your parents, the greatest statesman of the 20th century, Winston Churchill, fought the greatest evil the world had ever seen. Now, the Americans used something called a Norden bomb, bomb site, and they only bombed during the day, and they lost so many crews as a result. It's a phenomenal new Apple series called Masters of the Air that shows this. The British came to the Americans and said, are you guys crazy? You're sending your pilots to die during the day? And the Americans said, well, we want to make sure we are not hitting civilians. We're hitting, we're hitting um, military sites with this great, it was the second greatest invention after the atomic bomb of the Second War, the Norden bomb site. That's not what you and the British did. You bombed at night indiscriminately, murdering millions of civilians. So by the definition of, of uh, Norman Finkelstein, who says that whether you intentionally target civilians, which Israel does not, Israel loses hundreds of soldiers. But the whole point, with surgical the whole point, Rabbi wait, 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 no, but I'm asking, but, but I need, I need to respond to, to Norman Finkelstein. Let me respond was, to your argument. Was, about... Britain a, was Britain a terrorist state fighting the Nazis? Okay, yes or no? I will come indiscriminately. To... Yes, I'd like come... to hear his response. Let me ask Norman that. I, I, what I would say to that, for what it's worth, 
is that there was huge regret over things like the carpet bombing of Dresden, which led directly, Fair which led directly to Cologne, the... Cologne, Essen, Dresden. Dresden which was led the directly, the by the way... It was April, to, it was April yeah, 1945. Let's go to Cologne, let's let go to finish. Dresden, let's go to Hamburg. Let me finish. Yes. Which led directly to the Geneva Convention to try and prevent these things happening again. Many people <laughs> think what's happening now in Gaza is a form of that happening again. Oh, my again. God. Norma Finkelstein. No, no. He's, what is happening with Piers? This is legit, like, shocking. He's... What the... F Oh, no, what's happening in Gaza is what the Americans did with a Norden bomb site. The Israelis are using surgical targeted strikes. Well, they're the killing a lot of Hamas children. Lives because being Hamas that, lives under their homes. If Israel's Hamas being, builds... Rabbi Shmuley, with respect, if Israel's being that precise, why is it killing so many children? First, firstly, I want to know what, what is the accuracy of your numbers, because I trust Hamas as much as I trust... They, they're complete liars. Secondly, oh. Hamas... Oh, okay, got it. Fortunately, wants these children to die because the more that die, the more you're going to challenge me on TV. Israel wants them to live. Israel withdrew in 2005. Hamas builds their military installations under these children's homes, under their kindergartens, under their nurseries, under their hospitals. All right, let we me bring in. We now found 350 miles of tunnels under children's homes. That's the size of the okay, New York I want to subway bring in, system. I want to be fair to both sides on time. Norma Finkelstein, your response. What would you like me to respond to? I suppose the analogy with World War II and the fact that indisputably, you know, many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of, of civilians died in that conflict. Uh, and the argument is it was for the greater good of defeating the Nazis. Do you see any parallel with wanting, and I completely understand Israel's desire, fervent desire, to eliminate Hamas after what they did on October the 7th, particularly as Hamas has stated again and again, they want to keep repeating it again and again. So on that particular argument about when you wage a war against whether it's the Nazis or Hamas, I wouldn't be so callous about bombing civilian populations if I was advocating for a side in the genocidal campaign that was doing the genocide, okay? Because between Hamas and Israel, no matter how much Hasbara dick riders and ultra Zionists claim that this is the case, Israel is far closer to the Nazi regime than Hamas is. As a lot of civilians tragically will get killed in the process, but ultimately, that shouldn't stop you uh, going ahead with the war uh, to try and achieve your goal. What do you say to that? What I would say to that is there's a very good reason why this case was brought before the International Court of Justice. That is, as I'm sure you know, that if you examine what Israel has done in Gaza since October 7th, by virtually every dimension you examine it, the intensity of the bombing, the density of the bombing, the magnitude of destruction of civilian dwellings, civilian... In it's literally like, like, there is no, like, people, people don't look beyond, like, oh, well, victims of the Holocaust, six million Jews, right? Uh, and the Germans were doing the Holocaust, the Nazis were doing the Holocaust to the six million Jews. So Israel, well, they're, that's the Jewish nation state, right? So it's, it's, you know, it's just like whoever is attacking them is basically like the Nazis, right? And they don't realize that, like, no dog, look a little bit, investigate a little bit further, just scratch the surface, and you will recognize that the systematic murder machine in this situation is not the resistance movement of fundamentalists, certainly, but the resistance movement that they've designed under permanent occupation. It's the people doing the permanent occupation. There are no parallels between the quality of these two guys' answers. It's insane. Yeah infrastructure, the percentage, the absolute number of children killed, the relative number of children killed to uh, combatants killed, the percentage of women and children versus men killed, the number of medical personnel killed, the number of journalists killed, the number of UN workers killed by virtually every dimension that you examine the conflict by virtually any and every metric that you examine the conflict, Israel's assault on Gaza, which we should bear in mind, is among the most densely populated places on God's earth, and uh, it has been sealed off from humanity since 2006. As Giora Island put it in March 2004, Giora Island was the head of the Israel, excuse me, yes, of the Israeli National Security Council. He described Gaza, and I'm quoting him now. Hold on. Shmuley's going to insult Norm, cut him off, and then say, 
and then pull up his phone to show like a, a, a full photo of Gaza prior to uh, October 7 and be like, does this look like um, occupation to you? That type shit. Let's see. As a huge concentration camp. That's not me. That's Giora Island, the former head of the Israeli National Security Council. So if you put all of these metrics together and you put in and you add in the context, the context being a concentration camp in which half the people are children, 70% are refugees. If you add in the context and the metrics, there is a very good reason why Israel was brought before the International Court of Justice. Now, Mr. Shmuley has every right to question the authority of the numbers, the figures, and so forth. I am a strong believer in the right of Holocaust deniers to make a case before the public because, as John Stuart Mill once put it, we are all fallible, and being fallible, we have to always have a place in our minds open to the possibility that we are wrong. So, like Holocaust deniers, I do believe that Rabbi Mr. Shmuley should have the right to speak. However, granting that right, he has a very tall order. If a Holocaust denier wants to deny the Nazi Holocaust, he or she has to refute a vast corpus of scholarship uh, uh, attesting to the reality of the Nazi Holocaust. In the same way, Rabbi Shmuley, if he wants to deny that a plausible case for genocide can be made in Gaza, he has to refute a vast body of documentation. And that documentation ran as it was presented by the South African application. It ran to 84 single-spaced pages with literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of footnotes. Now, that's the first hurdle. Are we really going allow, allow, allow me to allow Allow me to finish. No, no, no. Allow no, no. me you, to finish. Your, your debating style allow... is to drone on coma inducing that's how you debate you try to put your opponents mm. into slumber for god's sake you made your point it's time for me to respond that's a dialogue no you i'm not i'm not done debate i'm not like you did with alan dershowitz and you dominate you took three quarters of the time i won't allow it now let me respond first of all pierce i'm glad that norm has at least had the intellectual honesty to concede the first point that the icj the international never ruled against israel now notice he's saying that south africa brought the case they lost the case first point because I've been attacking his credibility. For you to say, Pierce, I'm attracting, attacking him ad hominem, his personality, I'm not. The question is whether this man is a scholar or not. He has no tenure. He was denied tenure at DePaul University. He is only known because he's a Jewish anti-Semite. Now, number two, this is the fifth time he accused Israel of genocide. He started in 1982 in Lebanon. Now, what does genocide mean? It was coined by a Holocaust survivor in 1947 named Raphael Lemkin. Geno is an ethnicity. Side means murder. It is the murder of an ethnicity. Norm needs to make the case that Israel is slaughtering Palestinians because they're Palestinians and Arabs and Muslims. Well, then how does well, Israel have 1.9 million totally safe? Well, he doesn't need to make that uh, argument. Israel has made that argument for him. Pretty much every single person has seen it as well. You can claim about, uh, you know, the, the mistreatment of Palestinian citizens of Israel or whatever the... Wait, is he an Armenian genocide denier? He might be. I've heard that a lot too. Yeah, Armenians in in Istanbul uh, were not killed in the Armenian genocide, so it doesn't count. Israeli citizens who vote in the Knesset, an Israeli Arab judge who put an Israeli sorry, an Israeli Arab judge who put an Israeli Jewish president in jail for rape. By the way, why is that that none of the Israeli Arabs have risen up to stop this genocide because it has nothing to do with right, Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. It, it has to right. do with a date called October 7th. Let me ask you this. 1,200 Jews yeah. were shot in the genitals, burned to death, slaughtered, yeah. and no democracy should allow that, except for one person, Norm Finkelstein. No, no. Because he has a, no, no. an irrational hatred of Jews. Rabbi Shmuley, with respect, Norm Finkelstein is not the only person seriously concerned about what's happening in terms of Israel's response. Genocide? Using the word I genocide? Would say, I would genocide? say the majority of the world right now is concerned about what's going on in Gaza. Is, and is, is and, President Biden and, 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 and believes that Israel's no. response is now becoming wholly disproportionate. And again, I ask you this question. Netanyahu, incredibly unpopular uh, back home in Israel, you know, probably wouldn't even... Now, 
Only now it's becoming unpopular. Being prime minister now, if I hadn't been with this war, given the scale of the social unrest and protests over his attempt to thwart the power of the Supreme Court. So you've got a deeply unpopular prime minister, particularly with Israelis' own people, right, waging a war, and many people th cynically think he's just going to keep doing this because it buys him more time. But I, if I could ask him, and I can't, because he won't come on again on this programme uh, to date, I would simply say, when does this end? How many people are you prepared to kill on the other side before you declare mission accomplished. And why would you think, by the way, that killing so many innocent people in Gaza and destroying so much of the homes in Gaza, north and south, why would you think that that would end radicalization of people who may be sympathetic to Hamas? Why would it not have the opposite effect? When I saw you face to face in your uh, studio in London a few months ago, I told you I think that you've been fair on this conflict. So I respect your question. And I want to take it seriously. First of all, Netanyahu's unpopularity means nothing. Churchill destroyed the Nazis, saved Western civilization, and immediately was kicked out by the British. He actually lost uh, the election, as you well know. So that means nothing. It doesn't mean Churchill wasn't a great man. It means that it means nothing. Number two, let's say, for example, look where I am. I'm in the beauty of South Florida. This is where I grew up. Imagine that six million Jews living in Israel. Bro, it's so funny to constantly bring up Churchill. Because Churchill also did a genocide, like literally, definitionally. It's so, it's, it's funny. And yeah, I mean, obviously he's bringing up Churchill in South Florida, which is mind boggling to me. Like the fact that he's not, the fact that he's not even living in Israel. It's like, what the f man, brother, you ain't even living there. What's going on? Go live there. Why are you dick riding us so hard while talking about, but while you're still living in South Florida. I'll say, you know what? We've had it. We've tried to state 75 years, the whole world hates us. They want to kill us. We have people like Norman Finkelstein calling us satanic, saying that we come from a boil of hell. We have Norman Finkelstein saying that he cheered hallelujah when the women were shot in the genitals and, and raped. So we're going to move to South Florida. They do a deal with Biden. Biden says, you know, it's cheaper for us to just move you guys to beautiful Florida than it is to give Israel. And Israel disappears, God forbid, in a, in a very humanitarian way. No one dies. Now you're left with no Israel. Will that change for one moment, Pierce? All of the women in Gaza now under Hamas the teenage girls who have tires put around their heads who are burned to death by their brothers because they have sex before marriage. Will it change the fact that LGBTQ Palestinians have their genitals cut off and are castrated? Will it change the fact that any political protest on the part of Palestinians, no Israel anymore, against Hamas, have them shot 20 or 30 at a time by hooded terrorists? Will it change the fact that Palestinian Authority officials, their fellow, are thrown off rooftops by Hamas, who did this in 2006 in a coup? Will it change the fact that there isn't one Arab? Bro's now doing ad hominems against Palestine. It wasn't enough that he was doing it against literally anyone and everyone that was brought up. He just swapped it over to like just Palestine in general. He's not going to stop, dude. This man is a machine. He's like, listen, Piers, you know what would really solve um, the reactionary tendencies that uh, that the, the Hamas has? You know what would really save those LGBT Palestinians? Mark 84, JDAM precision guided munitions dropping 2,000 pound Mark 84 bombs on top of their place of business, their places of worship, their homes, their schools. This is how you completely eradicate all matter of anti-LGBT crimes in Gaza. That's how you do it. Democracy. Will it change the fact that in Syria, 600,000 Arabs, 600,000, Norm Finkelstein doesn't give a damn about them, were killed between 2011 and 2014. Israel is not the problem. Arab dictatorships, tyranny. Would it change the fact that Ismail Haniyeh is worth $4 billion? Would it change the fact that Khalid Mashal is worth $7 billion? It would change nothing. If Israel left the Middle East, the Arab world is still in crisis, killing teenagers, killing LGBTQ, destroying democracy, all dictatorship, kleptocracy. You have Mahmoud Abbas, who's a billionaire. You have Yasser Arafat, who not only died on the Forbes 400 richest men in the world, which is shocking, but his wife still lives in a penthouse paid for by the Palestinians in Paris. And one final thing. When Dude, what are you saying? What does any of this have to do with Israel doing a genocide? It's like, dude, this is literally always the same playbook from reactionaries. Like, always. It's like, oh, yeah? What about black-on-black -black violence, dude? If cops weren't killing black people, well, then black-on-black -black violence would still exist. And it's like, okay, so don't you think the responsibility of the state is to alleviate some of the socioeconomic conditions that create violent crime? Why are you exacerbating it? Like, the argument always makes no sense to me, maybe because I'm so brain-broken from seeing this dialogue tree play out over and over and over again. It's like, are you trying to say that, like, that's why you're killing Palestinian babies? Like, you're, you're killing Palestinian children, 14,000, and blowing up their schools because you, you're just, like, really upset that Ismail Haniyev has uh, 
a billion dollars to his name? Is that what it is? He's like stealing funds from the Palestinians? How is this a justification? When, when, when Norman Finkelstein fabricates and says about the terrible plight of the Palestinians in Gaza, they were given about $100 billion over the past 18 years. More, that, that is triple per capita what the Marshall Plan was given to Europeans. Look what they did with it. Germany, France, you know, England. And you know what the Palestinians did with it? With what Hamas? They built tunnels. It's pretty funny to be like, hey, by the way, how dare you say Israel is ethnically targeting Arabs? But here's why the Arab mind is barbaric. Like his retaliation to Israel is not ethnically targeting Arabs is that, well, we're ethnically targeting Arabs because they deserve it because they have the mind of an animal. Oh, okay. Got it. Oh, okay. Cool. Thank you. I, I surely don't think, <laughs> I surely don't believe Israel is targeting Arabs on the basis of their ethnicity now. With, with giant television screens where the, palace, where the uh, Hamas Hitler, Yichia Yash, is living now with his family. They okay. didn't build one bomb shelter. Let me, let me go to Norman Finkelstein. Norman, the question I would have for you is this. Do you accept that Hamas need to be removed from power in Gaza? I would say that the preeminent... <clears throat> excuse me. I would say that the preeminent question at the present moment ought to be, do I accept the fact that the Israeli government ought to be removed from power? Well, hang on, that's a different question. No, with respect, that's a different okay. question. Okay. I can no, ask you that, Pierre, Pierre, I can ask Pierre, you that separately, Pierre, but the, the specific question I have for you... Pierre, Pierre, to... That's crazy. Bro, you let Shmuley f***ing yap for like 25 uninterrupted minutes saying the most unhinged shit and then the first moment that you ask a question to norm and he wants to go on a long-winded answer that reframes the question in a way that's more favorable to his position at least from the audience's uh understanding of it especially because it's a complicated answer to begin with you immediately stop him and you're like no answer the question bro Shmuley hasn't answered one question yet dog what do you mean Particularly given what you said after October the 7th, is simply, should Hamas remain in power? And I, should Hamas remain in power? I think that the Palestinian people should be able to determine their own future and determine their leadership. That's just the basic democracy. Beautiful answer, which is my answer as well, for the record. Joel Siverud, thank you for the 25 get the subs. Man, this guy is peppering me today. Joel Siverud is correct. That answer is correct. Democratic what is your principle. personal opinion? No, no, no. I don't decide what people should do with no, their you've lives. You've expressed many strong opinions about it. Hang on, hang on. When was Rabbi Shmuley, I can do an interview. Um, thank you. Uh, okay. no, no, the, pro the problem I have with our response is you're very quick to level the charge of genocide at Israel, and many people would agree with you, many wouldn't. But, on the, but you're not so keen to be held to account for your view about Hamas. And I don't see how. Hamas is born out of a necessity for resistance. Norm Finkelstein's position is that it is not up to him to tell someone living in the Warsaw Ghetto how they choose to resist to the Nazis that have put them there. That's for later, okay? That's it. There would be no Hamas if there was no oppressive apartheid Jewish supremacist state. Now, anyone, after what they did on Pierce, October the 7th, Pierce, could possibly Pierce. conclude they should stay in power. I spent months trying to describe to all of you how Hamas came to be and how they rose in prominence, how they garnered more sympathy and influence. It is a direct result of the violence that the Palestinians experience from the apartheid state. That's it. Like, they wouldn't even have the sheer numbers that they were able to get to if there wasn't a real purpose. It's so stupid. It's so, it's so silly to talk about this. If you don't have a legitimate, inherently, phenomenally reactionary, phenomenally racist position on the existence of Arabs, if you don't believe that Arabs are like rabid, violent dogs, okay, if that, if that isn't your predisposition, it's a pretty easy thing to understand. It's like, no, these guys... They're not operating on like unfettered anti-Semitism as the primary motivator. They're operating on survival.
It's not Arabs, it's the Islam. No, that's just cobium. Doesn't matter. Islam, Arabs, doesn't fucking matter. You're just a racist fucking idiot. After all, one of the most major regional allies to Israel is a Muslim country. It's the Muslim country that I'm from, Turkey. Another major ally to Israel is another Muslim country, Azerbaijan. You don't know anything. Saudi Arabia is another ally to Israel and has been for a very long time. Saudi Arabia isn't just a Muslim country, but specifically is the Wahhabist center. It's bullshit. You come in here and you think you have an educated perspective on the matter. You look at the aesthetics of a situation and you add on your own learned racism and you apply it into a situation without ever thinking about any of the other externalities, without ever thinking about any of the other factors at play. This is, unfortunately for you, a stupid way to argue. You are morally incurious. You're intellectually incurious. And you will shut out actual good analysis if you keep operating like this. I don't, I'm, not gonna, I'm not saying you're a moron. I'm not saying you're doing it deliberately. I'm simply stating that this kind of bigotry, much like every other kind of bigotry, will shut off a decent way of analyzing any situation. It's very easy. It's maybe even, there's this, this sedating element when you're like, oh, but I, I feel comfortable. It's like a warm hug. It's what I know. Of course they're doing this because they're anti-Semitic. That's how Islam is. They're barbarians. You have now completely shut out Actual analysis. It's the, yes, intellectual laziness of bigotry. Don't do it. Uh, I, I don't want to have to re, uh, redo the interviews you did with me. I was very clear about my opinion when you asked about October 7th. Hmm. I was also very clear as to what I believe Hamas should or shouldn't do regarding its uh, leadership or its uh, current power uh, in uh, Gaza. I've not tried to evade any of your no, but, questions. Okay, well, just, okay, for those but, who, but, 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 but Norman, for those, for those who may not have seen the previous I, I interviews, to, uh, for those who may not have seen our okay, previous fine, conversations, I, I simply ask fine, again. That's fine. Here, it is a simple question. Okay, should, that's fine. should Hamas stay in power? Because Israel's whole argument yeah. is that they have to keep going with this warfare to eradicate yeah. Hamas. And my question for you is, do you think that, in principle, Hamas should stay in power? Well, Pierce, I'm going to answer you because I never fear the truth, and I'm not going to try to evade your question. Let's take a simple metric. We'll take the question of children killed. Oh my on God! October answer the 7th. question. Should Hamas stay in power? No, these, are different, these are answers the to different questions. Okay. Just answer the question, I, Norm. For God's sake! You said you don't want to evade the truth. You, Should Hamas okay. stay in power or not? Answer the question. Pierce. Either you're going to moderate the program or there's honestly no point in continuing. I do think it's you a very... Have to I, have to say, I have to say, I do think it's a very simple question. And it goes right to the heart. No, it's not. It goes I, right to the heart. This is why you know he's a disingenuous hack, by the way. Okay? Think about the level of moderation he applied to Shmuley. And then think about, like, how aggressively he's pursuing this gotcha. Which is not even a gotcha at all. Every single person in the, involved in this process knows what the correct answer to it is. Norm Finkelstein already gave the correct answer to it. If the Palestinian people will Hamas to continue being their governing body, then they should be, and I am not going to be the person to tell them that is not correct. I am not going to be the person that tells the uh, Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto how they get to resist to an apartheid state. But this is not even a question that should be uh, asked at all, because there's no question, there's no answer to this question. Hamas has not been in power. It is not a real power center. Hamas is simply a militant resistance group. What are they resisting to is the major point of contention here. That should be what you're focusing your interest on. There would be no Hamas if there was no violent apartheid state. This is an irrelevant deflectionary mechanism that ultra-Zionists apply willingly and deliberately in a disgusting manner to any conversation whatsoever, 
because they know that it is a way to try to shut off your interlocutor. It is a way to get you to say, I condemn Hamas. That's it. It's a longer way to try and, and you know, say, do you condemn Hamas? It's just a deliberate deflectionary mechanism. Okay? The answer is simple. You don't get to tell another human how they will free themselves. If you are an honest and moral individual, your goal should be to eradicate not the resistance to the unjust structures, but the unjust structures themselves. And there is perhaps no structure more unjust than a genocidal apartheid regime that has occupied an entire population for over 75 years. Part it's, of Israel's argument about, about okay. why they are continuing Pierce, to execute the war. Pierce, Pierce, how about letting me decide whether it's a simple question? How about letting me decide? Well, either Hamas so stays in power or it doesn't, doesn't okay. it? Okay. I don't no, think you have to no, be a professor I, to answer the question. Piers, 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 there's a difference between whether or not Hamas stays in power and whether Hamas should be in power. So let me get into st the stays in power is a military question. Should be in power. Well, let's look at it. I say if Hamas, which is responsible for the killings of 36 children on October 7th, should not stay in power, then you must certainly agree, Piers, and I'm going to kindly ask you to please answer me. You must surely agree then that Israel, which has killed now approximately 12,000 children and is plausibly accused of having killed them in the course of a genocide. Now, I'm going to ask you, Piers, to what please What is your source for 12,000 children? Question. What's the source? Do, what is your source, please? Okay. What's your source? Well, it's a Palestinian health authority that. run by Hamas. We know that. Run by Hamas. Wait, wait, wait. wait no, no, no. Answer Rabbi Shmuley, you don't interrupt. This is actually an important question and an important moment in the debate. Continue, Norman Finkelstein. So I have to ask you, Piers, if you believe that Hamas should not stay, into po stay in power because it killed 36 children on October... This is why I always joke and say I'm a lesser evil voter, which is why I'm voting for Hamas. It's a joke because I can't vote for Hamas, obviously. That's why I do it illegally in 2006, 2005, whenever the f election, the sham election happened. But the part that's actually as serious as a heart attack is the fact that, yes, the harm reductionist utilitarian argument here is voting for Hamas over voting for whichever the Israeli government uh, is, is currently maintaining the apartheid october 7 pound for pound the casualties the deaths the murders the atrocities that occurred are nothing in comparison to israel's actions it's true and if you have an issue with that statement if you have an issue with that statement then you just don't see palestinians as humans you only think israelis are humans if you are a liberal if you are a harm reductionist you're voting for Ismail Haniya every time on that goddamn ballot, okay? You're doing a writing campaign for Yahya Sinwar. You're like, hey, man, I really don't like the, the methods. I really don't like what they've done. October 7th was an atrocity, but, you know, we got 99% Hitler. We got 100% Hitler. Gonna go with 99% Hitler. And let me tell you, statistically speaking, if we're looking at the uh, atrocity scale here, okay? Calculating atrocities... It turns out it's not even 99% Hitler versus 100% Hitler. It's around like, what, 65% Hitler versus 100% Hitler? Israel beats out the Palestinian forces on babies per capita murder, on civilians per capita murder, civilians to enemy comb combatant ratios. Israel loses, or well, wins. Israel has killed far more civilians than it has enemy combatants. Israel has killed a far greater number of children than enemy combatants in comparison to enemy combatants. Israel has destroyed a far greater percentage of civil infrastructure in Gaza than Hamas has in Israel. They are the far greater evil in this situation. That's it. Vote Hamas for the lesser evil vote. What's your source though? Yeah, what's my source? My own two eyeballs, every single mainstream media outlet, every single third-party investigator, every single NGO, every single human rights group, the, the United Nations, 
Now, I know this person is joking, but he should not be joking at the top of the hour. Is Israel even better at killing their own people? That much I don't know. I feel like I feel like Israel, that, that one is a tough one. And, and this isn't to be like, oh, Hamas is killing its own people all the time, like throwing them off rooftops or whatever. But I do think that um, Israel is pretty good at killing their own people, but like accidents do happen as well on the on the Palestinian front. Like even if Israel is, is, is winning that equation too, and there is a likelihood that it probably is, it still doesn't change the reality that the, the number for all the other ones are so much larger. Israel also number one at collecting semen. Israel number one at friendly fire. Israel number one at uh, cum, attract, uh, cum extraction. Very good. October 7th. Then you must surely agree several times, thousand times more emphatically that the Israeli government should not be in power because it killed 12,000 children, not, not as collateral damage, but plausibly, according to 15 of the 17 judges on the highest judicial body okay, in yeah, the world. Okay, you said that point. Okay, here's my answer. Plausibly, here's my plausibly, answer to you. Here's my answer. Right, genocide. Here's my answer. You mm -hmm. haven't so far answered my question. If you do, I will give you an emphatic answer to yours. So let me just ask again, should Hamas stay in power? My answer is, if we apply one no, standard... No, no, that's not an answer. Across the board. No, that's not an answer. If we apply... If we apply one standard across the board, I am perfectly happy to say Hamas should be removed from power if you agree that several thousand times yeah, you've made that point. more Here's emphatically my the Israeli government should be removed I from don't power. Think, I, well, I think there are two completely separate questions, and I would answer it like this. No, they're not. Well, I'm going to explain no, to you. What, I'm going to explain why I believe they are. Okay. They are. Because, I will listen. I'll, because Israel, I'll listen. Israel's response was a response to an appalling terror attack. I believed after October... Yeah, Hamas's existence is a response to the most consistent appalling act of terrorism, genocidal apartheid. So at that point, you have to literally ask yourself, what is worse? A question many genocide deniers have actually found the wrong answer to. If you ask a white supremacist, supporter of the South African apartheid, they would say... No, the ANC is far graver of an evil than the white supremacist apartheid regime in South Africa. If you ask the average person, a moral person, a smart person, a sane person, person with a heart, they would say, regardless of the crimes that the ANC may have engaged in, and there was certainly violence, the far greater evil was the systematic exclusion of black people and those with, with any kind of black ancestry from regular participation in South African life. The apartheid is a far graver, far more violent evil. That's it. I think that, no, uh, I think that Norman Finkelstein here is too gracious to even capitulate to the standards. I know he just wants to basically, he, he wants to basically carry along the conversation so we can move to more productive avenues, but... Overall, there is also a standard for this violence. There is also a necessitation of this violence. And when you investigate a little bit further, you start recognizing that violent resistance to an apartheid, no matter what the tactics are, is still nowhere near as unjustifiable as the violent mechanisms of suppression that the apartheid necessitates. That's it. Because the standard of violence is set by the oppressor. The standard of violence is set by the colonial power. The standard of violence in this circumstance is set by Israel. Over the 7th, Hamas rescinded any right to continue having any power over Gaza and should be removed. The only debate would then be how would that best be done? And I have serious question marks about Israel's response. In response to whether can the I, current... Can I, can I oh, oh, hang on, hang on. Let me finish my sentence, Here's... please. And in, and in response Excuse to your me. question, Norma Finkelstein, about Israel's government, no, I do not believe they should continue, actually. I think this government has lost the, the, uh, 
faith of its people. I think Netanyahu in particular has lost all confidence and popularity with the Israeli people who blame him for what happened on October the 7th. Uh, and so, no, I don't think they should stay in power, actually. I think both countries should have new, new leadership and new governments. That's my answer. But again, I'll just okay, come so, back so to you. Norm is saying, you Norm but is hang, saying on, hang on, I don't equi- I, hang on. I don't equivocate either with the other. You can divorce the two questions. You can say, after October the 7th, should Hamas stay in power? Yes or no? And then you can have a question mark about whether this current Israel government should stay in power because of the way they responded. They're two different questions. But you, Norman uh, Finkelstein, so far... Well, hang on. Uh, Casey, I, wait a second, Rabbi I, I, I just want to get one answer out of Norman Finkelstein. Finkelstein. This is what really pisses me off. He's still trying to make it seem like October 7 happened on an island. Like it was just a, an act of violence that simply happened because of anti-Semitism. Like, Jew hatred is the motivation of Hamas and nothing else. And to that, I have to say, God damn it. Shut the f*** up, chat. Yeah, Stop still leaking. Got a lot of fun to come in. Stop leaking. Everything is in context. My- in the years and decades since, and even her thought processes today. Everything is in context. My mother used to, she would give us a hard time sometimes and she would say to us, I don't know what's wrong with you young people. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? (laughs) You exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. Piers Morgan, you did not fall out of a coconut tree and neither did the Palestinian population. The Palestinian population existed within the context of all that came before it. You cannot talk about October 7 without talking about what came on October 6, what came on October 5, and what came far before it. For 75 years, I'm Coconut Pilled and Content Maxing. This is the greatest soundbite that Kamala, Marxist, Leninist, dialectical materialist, historical materialist Harris could ever deliver to a community such as ourselves. Okay? Donald Harris is thinking about no longer disowning his estranged daughter. That's right. Donald Sterling Harris, famed Marxist economist professor at Stanford University. You want to know who actually probably told Kamala about the coconut tree analogy? Maybe it wasn't his mom. Maybe it wasn't her mom at all. Maybe it was actually her father. I'm a truther. I'm a Donald Sterling uh, 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 Harris truther, for those of you who don't know. Her father is a Marxist. Wait till you find out. Wait till you find out. So is Pete Buttigieg's father as well. I have no idea what the fuck you're saying. Please elaborate. The coconut tree analogy that she talks about is like, is, is basically uh, somewhat, I mean, it's dialectical thinking. It's uh, foundationally a, a Marxist way of thinking. It is how I think, or at least you can exaggerate to make it seem like that. It's saying that, We are determined by historical conditions. We don't live in a vacuum abstract uh, of abstract debate purvatry. It doesn't even have to be Marxist. It's neo-realist. I mean, it's just, I like to think it's Marxist. I like to think that she's actually doing, I like to think that she's actually doing historical materialism. Men make their own history, but they do not make it as they please. They do not make it under self-selected circumstances, but under circumstances existing already, given and transmitted from the past. The, tr- the tradition of all dead generations weighs like a nightmare on the brains of the living. Or in simpler terms, you didn't fall out of a coconut tree. You think you fell out of a coconut tree? You did not. You exist within the context of everything that came before you. Kamala motherfucking Harris. Girl boss queen. Finkelstein, as to whether you will answer my question about whether I, Hamash should I stay in power. I said, Harris... If you use a single standard across the board, then I accept your conclusion. So long as you're being morally as well as legally consistent, Mm -hmm. I have personally no problem with that conclusion. However, I would want to say, Pierce, and I'm trying to be honest, but also intellectually consistent in this matter, 
You said that Hamas disqualified itself from leadership because of the atrocity that was committed or atrocities that were committed October 7th. Yes. Now, if you agree with the head of the National Security Council of Israel at the time in 2004, that Hamas is a huge concentration camp. I'm quoting him now. Gaza, you mean. Would you also agree, would you also agree that October 7th was a reaction to confining one million children in a concentration camp. You support Palestine, Muslim? I don't know why you sound like, like an oblivion NPC. You support Palestine, Muslim? Like, he, he just, like, called out my class. Stop! In the name of the law! Halt, Muslim! Okay, Pierce, he's not you answering the question. <laughs> he never will. But, uh, Pierce, I have to All right, let me bring in Rabbi Shmuley, because he's been waiting okay. patiently. Okay. Okay. More okay. patiently than you normally know do. Every, every time, go. every time, there's one main reason I wanted to do this debate, and Pierce, thank you for having me. It's, I'll tell you what it is. There were six million Jews who were turned into ash and lampshades and shot, and they're in, you know, uh, graves. They have no voice. They're all it's so weird and disrespectful to, like, bring up victims of the Holocaust in such a careless manner. You are betraying the severity of the crimes when you, one, do it in this, like, charlatan-style way that you're doing it, especially doubly fraudulent to do it to defend ongoing genocide. It's gross. It's triply fraudulent and gross when doing it against a person who is a direct descendant of Holocaust survivors, two Holocaust survivors. Only tomb is my, our memory. Norman Finkelstein is a Holocaust denier. He has said that David Irving, the number one Holocaust denier on earth, who Britain despises to their credit, who lost huge against Deborah Lipschitz, he said he's a great historian. Every time he calls Gaza a concentration camp, as if there's gas chambers there, as if there's SS Einsatz grouping going around shooting Palestinians, he denies the whole, he is a Holocaust denier. Now, why does this matter? Because why won't Norman Finkelstein answer your simple question about why, whether Hamas should stay in power? And you're gonna, and don't tell me this is ad hominem. In 2016, he gave- <laughs> Norman Finkelstein's like, yeah, my, my parents are, um, I don't know what survivors, which greatly informs my perspective on on history and 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 how this should um, you know and what humans should and shouldn't do. Yeah, they come from a a ghetto. I don't know, I don't know where. Even an interview where he said that he essentially makes his uh, income through giving speeches. He said that he gave forty slips to his accountant for speeches against Israel. That doesn't um, mean he doesn't mean know, what he no, says. No, wait, wait, one second. Hold on, hold on. It he doesn't mean he doesn't that mean was what he says. Before. No, no, one second. Hold on. If he attacks Hamas, he said that his speeches went from 40 to only four, he'll be down to zero. Now, here's the point. You're right. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that. But when you pressed him in your first debate, you did so admirably, Pierce. Hours, I, Shani Luke's parents stayed at my house for the past 10 days. She was the woman who within an hour or two yeah. of the attack, a German-Israeli woman, was put dead, shot in the head, stripped naked. I maintained that she was the most desecrated woman in world history in terms of how many people saw her naked body. As that was happening, Norman Finkelstein wrote, wrote it warms. What is he saying? every fiber of my soul about these bro he's just hyper focusing on this one scenes in gaza and glory glory hallelujah now to your credit you pressed him on this in the first interview and you know what he said he said i had no idea i only thought 50 jews had died i didn't know 1200 so two questions number one norman finkelstein how many jews need to die before you are no longer celebrating their death and saying, glory, hallelujah, is it 51? Is it 500? You know, one black man was murdered in Minnesota. His name was George Floyd. And tens of millions of people marched against his murder. God bless them. But for you, it would have had, we need 49 other dead black men before they start marching, number one. Number two, what you're confessing, Norm, is that you are a joke of history. He's so gross. I think, like, if I'm Israel, I'm trying to stop this guy and, like, Rappaport from ever appearing on camera and saying pro-Israel things permanently. Like, seriously, like Alan Dershowitz, this freak, Michael Rappaport, Amy Schumer, these are the best heroes of Israeli Hasbara? Like, this is so bad. It's just, you, you are doing the exact opposite. If your goal is to defend Israel, just make sure E. Fartlow is nowhere near Twitter. Or pay them to say anti-Israel shit. Because honestly, this is having a reverse polarizing, negatively polarizing effect. Brett Gelman, I feel like ultra Zionist propaganda like rots your brain in a really significant way where you are just like, well, I can't even see how gross this guy is.
When is it anti-Semitic? When is what anti-Semitic? Like what I'm saying? I'm not pro-Israel, brother. In the words of a Twitter user who uh, made fun of Kanye West after he refused to say something about Palestine, Kanye West decided <laughs> being a Zionist is the most anti-Semitic uh, you can be. So he chose to be a Zionist. <laughs> anyway, as a Jew, I have zero respect for others who blindly buy into Zionism. No, I get it. I totally get it, man. Listen, everybody, everybody is susceptible to propaganda. Okay? It's very powerful. That's it. Breaking through all of that and coming to your own conclusions requires a, a stroke of luck, for sure, and a shit ton of self-criticism. And I say this as someone who, as a Turkish person growing up in Turkey, who uh, believes that the Armenian genocide happened, like, you, you have to understand, like, I grew up in that environment, and it took a lot for me to shake that off. Jewish kids in America, especially if they have, like, ultra-Zionist or, you know, lightly Zionist, uh, even liberal Zionist family members, get propagandized for a very long time from from birth basically and the worst part about it is a lot of the propaganda is based around real historical factually correct evidence-based concepts okay that's why it is so uh hard to shake off too because it's not just like birthright where they're like here uh look at how scary palestinians are also look at how sexy the idf soldiers are please go have go uh you guys should hook up and make babies in Israel is beyond that. There's also the history books worth of information that shows that like you as a Jew have been hunted down and persecuted relentlessly throughout time. And you have to always remember that. And it can happen again. And look at how anti-Semitic people are. All of that is true. Every single part of that narrative in Jewish history is correct. That's why it's such a devastatingly effective strategy because it's, it's surround itself or at its core, it has fundamental, historically accurate truths. That's it. Uh, like, why do you guys think you would think that like the Arab world did the fucking Holocaust the way that these goddamn apes wearing suits in European countries talk about how uh, the Arab world deserves everything it gets, how barbaric they are. It's an abdication of responsibility by the Germans, for the record. It's a very comfortable narrative. So you can maintain your moral superiority. We're, we're the civilizing force of the world. We would never do genocide. We would never be anti-Semitic. How dare you? That is for the Arabs, the barbarians. You know? Isn't calling people apes further dehumanizing people? Yes. And I love doing it. That's your takeaway from this? If that's your takeaway from this, when I say apes in suits, what I'm simply mentioning, and I hope you guys understand this, is that the way that Europeans uh, who come from a colonial histor historical background present themselves and their actions and their history within the framework of a civilizing force, that they're somehow above it all. Okay, they're somehow above it all. That's why I like to say, uh, you know, angloid or, or um, things of that nature, basically. It is what people historically have uh, regarded uh, uh, the, the victims of colonial occupation. You know, it's a way to reframe it. Intellectual gods observing and judging the vermin from above. Exactly. And yet, that's why I say ape in a suit. Like... You wear the suit and you present yourself as elevated. After all, you're not a mere tribesman, right? You have science. You have the might. You have the will of God backing you. And therefore, of course, these are supposed to be your servile subjects. Like, the f*** do you mean? They don't know any better. There is that air of superiority that a lot of people, especially the European mind, often finds itself susceptible to such ways of thinking. That's why I like calling angloids apes in suits, because you are uncivilized. What's really ironic in all this is that growing up in a Zionist community, we were taught that Israeli terrorist groups during the founding of Israel and teachers called them terrorists, but the takeaway was that they were ultimately good. Yeah, I mean, uh, Lehi, Stern Gang, 
openly called themselves terrorists. Story. Because your defense to Pierce Morgan was, I didn't know. I have three people who do my Twitter. I gave it to them. By the way, I'd love to know even one name of those three. I dare you to mention their names because I'd like to question them because I believe you're fabricating that as well. I think you wrote this yourself. You did not give it to three people who work for you on Twitter. But here's my question. You claim to be a serious historian. What kind of serious historian before they even know the facts says, I love seeing dead Jews. You admit you knew nothing. You say that you had no knowledge and you were saying, glory, hallelujah, may more Jewish women be shot in the vagina and have their breasts cut off. Now, yeah, he said that, dude. That's crazy. Later, when Pierce Morgan said to you, hey, Norm, at least take it off. At least delete it. You now admit 1,200 died. And you know what you said? It's part of the historical record. So you are a fraudulent historian by your own admission. You said this fraud that you are thrilled that Jews were shot in the vagina, women were gang raped, is part of history. But it's a false history. So to be fair. <laughs> I love the Bro has no arguments. He's just making shit up. Like his argument is like, hey, first of all, a lot of atrocities did occur on October 7th. Just stick to the actual sh and say Norm celebrated it. And that's a gotcha enough. You know what I mean? That's it. If your goal is to not have a productive conversation and like embarrass your opponent, which is the uh, goal of the debate. Okay. Then just do that. You don't have to be like, yeah, that's right. They were playing football. And then the baby tried to high five the Hamas terrorists. And then the Hamas terrorists actually started playing football with the baby. And then there were rats. They were eating the rats. And then the rats were eating the babies. And then the rats grew. And then they ate the rats that ate the babies. That's how Hamas works. Sorry, I just mixed up my propaganda. All of a sudden, I'm Yon Me Park. Fair Pierce, when you tell me ad hominem, come on. The man either has credibility or he has no credibility. Okay. There's no tenure. Yeah. Okay. Let, me, let me give the final word to Norma Finkelstein. That part is f***ed up because he has no tenure due to Alan Dershowitz. People are going to clip that and say you're trivializing October 7. Yeah, I don't give a shit, dog. They say it anyway. Bro, people say I'm a Vladimir Putin supporter. They call me Osama bin Laden. You saying people are going to clip that doesn't change that reality. They're going to clip it anyway. If you know they're going to clip it, you know, show the full context when you see it. Um, the issue before us is Gaza. It's not me. Now, there is a temptation, obviously, on my part to defend my professional honor and my personal honor, but I am going to uh, forego that. I'm going to withstand that temptation and end on the note that this conversation began and was supposed to continue. And so I would say that if you are indicting me, then you are also indicting the sanity of the 15 judges on the International Court of Justice, including, quite surprising to me, including the American judge. Now, if you examine the proceedings closely, which I did, each judge had the option of including in their decision what's called a declaration. And the German judge did exercise that option and wrote a five-page declaration in which he distanced himself from certain of the findings. However, it was very noticeable that Israel's main ally in the world, the judge from that country, the American judge, did not issue a declaration, which is to say she went along with the conclusion without qualification, without qualification. Germany as a country has, has like, since World War II, this is the worst Germany has been as a nation, okay? Actually, unironically, I, I cannot think of another time where the immediate thought of Germany as a nation made me as disgusted outside of World War II. Straight up. Gross. ...that Israel is plausibly committing genocide. Now, I would want to end on the note, as you know, Piers, genocide is the... Says us, who are bombing millions of Palestinians, what do you mean? Yeah, I am, I, I'm disgusted with America that much as a given. Crime of crimes under international law. To be plausibly, plausibly uh, guilty of the crime of genocide, it's a very, very high standard.
a very high standard. And it would, it would, it seems to me, require a very high degree of dementia to deny that crimes of a vast, on a vast scale are occurring in Gaza. Okay. Thank you. We're going to leave it there. That is a blood libel. That is a blood libel. It's a lie. Uh -huh. The ICJ. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's blood libel when you say that Israel's genocidal actions are indeed genocidal. That's sick, man never said that. That is pure blood libel. Norm, you may as well say that we Jews mix blood into our the, the, of Christian children into our matzahs, poison the <laughs> What the f Yo, he's so insane, dude. Shmuley celebrating the ICJ decision is literally just like when Virginia Jeffrey and Alan Dersha was settled and the Dersh went on an exoneration media tour. Oh my god, you're right. And they're rivals the besties. Shmuley and, and Dersh. The Dersh! For those of you who don't know, <laughs> he said Israel doing, he said Israel's genocidal actions being called genocidal is akin to blood libel and then proceeded to describe it in great detail. He's so f awesome, For dude. Blood libel. Thank you. We're going to leave it there. I'm going to run libel. it again. That is a blood libel. It's a lie. The ICJ never said that. That is pure blood libel. Norm, you may as well say that we Jews mix blood into our, the, the, of Christian children into our matzahs, poison the wells of Europe. You are guilty of a blood libel. The ICJ <laughs> never said that. <laughs> Yo! No, it's even funnier. He didn't even say Israel's actions are genocidal is blood libel. He said saying that the ICJ's decision to continue that there is plausible evidence that Israel uh, has genocidal intent, which is a matter of record. This is not an issue where there is deliberation. That's just a matter of record. Ben Shapiro once did this to me. When I talked about during the George Floyd protests, I talked about the IDF teaching the American police forces after 9-11 about counterterrorism techniques, which also included the strategy of kettling and, and, and corralling protesters. And I wrote, I wrote this tweet out and then uh, what's his face? Neon ass taster. He, he got mad. God, Pod Horitz, the, the Pod Horace's nephew. Come on, there's definitely enough people that are brain broken here that knows who I'm talking about. John Pod Horace's fucking nephew. Oh my God, you guys are awful. You don't know anything. God damn it. I need more brain broken people. Neon Taster is his name. Neon Taster? Or is it not Neon Taster? It is him, right? Yeah, Neon Ass Taster. Yeah, John Podhor is his fucking uh, nephew. Anyway. Just say no and Blum, you freak. Yeah, I don't know his fucking name, dog. Why would I know? I forgot his fucking name. His, his username is like way more interesting. Neon Ass Taster. Anyway, regardless, he said me saying that the IDF trains American police forces and like taught them uh, strategies such as kettling and corralling was akin to blood libel. This was a long way to get there. My point was, don't say real things that are factually accurate are fucking blood libel. Blood libel is not accurate. It's gross. It's disgusting. And it has been used as a way to vilify Jewish people and justify pogroms. Why the fuck would you turn around and use that for something that is factually and historically accurate? They ruled in Israel's favor. You, sir, are a liar and you are guilty of a libel against your own people okay. and against your own parents. Your parents were not haters. They were victims. They did not hate Germans. The Germans hated them and tried to murder Rabbi them. Shmuley, you owe your parents' memory and apology. We're going to leave it.